Route 24 in Lewis. To place your deli or carryout orders, call 302-945-0700. Headlines, headlines, you can't get through your day without. Oh, power 1017. All right, good morning, everybody. Jumping on our Facebook Live this morning. Also, check out the Bill and Jessica podcast right up on our free Power app and on our website, power1017.com. Uh, Pfizer's COVID-19 vaccine has been authorized by the Food and Drug Administration for use in those ages 12 to 15. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's previously been researched for those 16 and older, now 12 to 15. The Moderna and Johnson & Johnson vaccines are approved for people 18 and older. The company said its clinical trial showed that the vaccine's efficiency is 100% for the younger group. 100%. That's huge. Good deal. That's like a uh, a miracle because there's no other vaccine, I think, that I know of. I'm not a doctor, but at least that I know of, that's 100% efficiency. Like none. Like 60% on other vaccines. Like 60, 40 or whatever. It is it supposed is. to be like excellent. Uh-huh. And these COVID vaccines are like 80%, you know, um, you know, 90%. Now, this is a hunt. Like, you don't, that's unheard of. So, administering the uh, vaccine to younger people is not yet recommended, although that decision is pending. So, I guess they're uh, they're getting there. They're going to eventually start opening up, you know, for, for vaccines for the younger. So, there you go. Uh, about 63%. Of Americans approve of President Joe Biden's performance so far. Oh, that's a good rating. And that's huge rating. Wow. Yeah, according to uh, New Associated Press, Nork poll released this week. That's up two percentage points since late March. The poll found 96% of Democrats and 23% of Republicans approve of his performance. He gets high marks for his handling of the pandemic, the economy, and health care. So deal. Joe Biden uh, right into Delaware doing that thing. Jess, you got some local stories. Yeah, so yesterday morning, hundreds of law enforcement officers and community members and loved ones came together to say their final goodbye to their fallen brother, yes. Delmar Corporal Keith Heacock. Very sad. Our flag does not fly because the wind moves it. It flies with the last breath of each soldier who died protecting it, is what Corporal Keith McCall had said on behalf of the Delmar Police Department. The community came together they said that he wasn't just an officer. He was a friend, a father, a husband, a brother, and a son. We're told that he wasn't afraid to help anyone, whether he was in uniform or not. He just really stepped up and put the badge away and showed everyone his heart, not just his badge. He was escorted back to Schwartz Funeral Home. And there is tons of fundraisers being set up for his son, Matthew, and his family, as well as the other victims of the attack. And um, when we find out more updates and fundraiser announcements, of course, we will definitely fill you in on that as well. But yesterday, um, our community said goodbye to Corporal Keith Cook at a memorial service. Yes, very sad. Thoughts and prayers. Rest in peace. They had a live stream. It was on YouTube. I watched a little bit of it, and it was very, very, very touching. So, yeah. Also, Warwick Community College has announced plans to hold an in-person commencement ceremony for the class of 2021. The ceremony will be held outdoors at Purdue Stadium on May the 12th at 7 p.m. And graduates are limited to two guests each. Tickets are going to be required for entry and social distancing and, of course, wearing of masks. And the protocols will be followed. But they did announce that it will be an in-person commencement ceremony. That is always great news that takes place tomorrow at 7 p.m. at Purdue Stadium. Shout out to the uh, class of 2021, I know. too. I know. Finally, you made did it. it. Y'all did it. And the Delaware State Police are actively conducting a death investigation involving an inmate at the James T. Vaughn Correctional Center mm. in Smyrna. We are told that the inmate died on May the 10th, and details are limited at this time. The victim will be turned over to the Delaware Division of Forensic Science, where an autopsy will be performed to determine the cause and manner of death. The investigation is still ongoing, and further details will be released as they become available. So that's wow. the update there on uh, the James T. Vaughn Correctional Center and the death of an inmate. Also, uh, yesterday, Eastern Shore Undercover was reporting out of Fruitland. Um, it says Station 16 responding to assist Station 3 Fruitland EMS with uh, an incident that just occurred. Someone was just stabbed while EMS was on the scene. EMS God. 
sounds very nervous as they're requesting police to expedite multiple times because the suspect was still on the scene. And then it was updated last night at 5.05, a 40-ish year old male who was stabbed in the back, EMS transporting him to Title Health PRMC. So I guess Damn. EMS had been, you know, dispatched mm -hmm. to an area and then someone got stabbed while they were on the scene and... Yeah, so that's terrible. That was a breaking news story out of Fruitland. Mm. Six forty. It is a Bill and Jessica show. We got uh, Bill and Jessica sports up next. And hey, major news that broke yesterday. Someone's Which coming one? back to the NFL. Oh wow. yes, yes. We'll get into it on the way. Here's Tate.